I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand how to write domain of a square root function. The question here is write domain using interval notation. We have two functions here f of x equals to square root of minus 2x plus 6 and g of x equals to square root of x plus 5 times x minus 1. You can actually pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. The concept here is that whenever you're working with radical functions, the radicand should be non-negative. So, so the idea is that radicand should be non-negative. Non-negative is better than saying positive since uh, we want to make sure that it could be zero or positive. Most of the time, zero is considered positive. So writing that radicent should be positive is, I should say, not incorrect. Okay, anyway, but this is better. Anyway, so we'll, we'll use this principle to find the domain of the function. Domain really means what values can the independent variable x can take right so in this particular case uh, what we have in the first one is a linear term minus 2x plus 6 as a ready set and this should be non-negative that is to say minus 2x plus 6 should be greater than or equal to 0 right that's what we mean in the other function g of x we have th these two factors x plus 5 times x minus 1 their product should be greater than or equal to zero. So this is the inequality which when solved will tell you the domain of this function. That's the whole idea. Let's solve this inequality. So we can take six to this side. So we get minus two x is greater than or equal to minus six. We can divide by minus two. Now when you divide by minus two, what happens to the inequality side? It reverses, right? A very critical step sometimes we may do a mistake here so I'm just putting it in red remember you have to reverse this when you divide or multiply by a negative number in inequalities so what we really get here is that X is less than or equal to 3 in interval notation this could be written as that the domain of this function is from minus infinity to 3 where 3 is included right that's how you write the domain for this function there are many other ways of writing and representing this domain one of them is number lines let me just put it here uh, kind of important to mention 0 and this is 3 for you right so let's say this is 3 for me 3 is included so that means we'll say 3 is included and on this left side going up to minus infinity so you could represent this on a number line also. Okay, now let's get back to the second question. We have x plus 5 times x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now to solve this inequality, we'll use interval test. As you know, these zeros, they divide your plane if there are two zeros, they will divide your plane in three parts, right? So, so those three parts are the three different intervals where we are going to test whether the function is positive or negative, right? So, so on either side of zero, a function can change a sign. That is kind of important to understand. Here we have two zeros. One, because of the factor x plus 5. Now, x plus 5 is 0 at minus 5, correct? So that is your 0. x minus 1 will become 0 if I substitute 1 for x, right? So that becomes our zeros, right? So let me write zeros or x-intercepts. Now these zeros divide the plane in intervals. This will divide the plane in interval from minus infinity to minus 5. Then we have minus 5 to 1 and this is 1 to infinity. So these are the three intervals 
which you get when you have two zeros. We need to test product of these two uh, linear factors. So let's have a test point for that. So test number could be any number within the interval. Let's take this as minus 6 here, 0 and 2. Right. So these are the numbers which we are going to test for the sign of our factors. The factors we are talking about are x plus 5 and x minus 1. Now if I substitute x as minus 6, I get this one, negative 1. We are not really interested in the number negative 1, but we are interested in the sign negative. So I will write negative here. If I substitute 0, we get positive. If I substitute 2, positive number. And in this case, x minus 1, if I substitute minus 6, I get minus 7. So minus 0 gives me a negative number, 2 gives me a positive number. Now, what we are testing is product of these two, right? So we want to test what is x plus 5 times x minus 1, correct? So when you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. When you multiply a negative and positive, you get negative. Two positives results into positive. We are looking for something which is non-negative, right? So, so the solution for us is these two intervals. These two intervals is the solution for us. So now we can clearly write down the domain. We say domain of this function is in interval notation from minus infinity to minus 5 union or you can say or right or 1 to infinity right that becomes the domain of the function. So this we did using interval test this is algebraic method right this is algebraic method right so okay we could have got this solution easily uh, by sketching the graph also since we found that the zeros are at minus 5 and 1 and x square coefficient is positive in that case if I have to sketch this function let's say this is our x-axis then the function would kind of look like this going through zeros like this do you see that so that becomes the graph where we have zeros at these two points let's say this is our x-axis is it okay then clearly from the graph we get our solution the solution is on the right of one and on the left of the other one do you see that so sketching or by graphing we could easily get a solution so that could be the other method so the other method alternate method could be by graph so these are different ways in which you can find domain and i hope this video gives you in details a picture of finding domain for such radical functions i'm anil kumar you can always share and subscribe to my videos Feel free to post questions and any suggestions. Thank you and all the best.